much to pour his grace, his anointing, his favor, so much that if you can't even measure it, then there's not a cup big enough to contain it. All God needed was somebody to take the lid off because he gives without measure. And if you won't put a limit on him, he won't put a limit on you. But my God, you did it to the core of the power of God. I want to talk about tonight something very important, turning your pain into motivation. I want to discuss turning your pain into motivation. Please look at me. The same water that can turn into a tidal wave, or what's that, a tsunami, that can kill a hundred, a thousand people over there in Indonesia. That same water, they figure out a way to turn it into energy. The same wind that can knock down telephone poles and electric wires. The same wind that can blow roofs off of houses. They figured out a way to turn that wind into energy. The same sun that if you lie out in it too long, come on, you'll go from black to blue. <laughs> the same sun that can burn things up if you sit it out too long in the exact the proximity of a sun ray. That same sun, they figured out a way to turn its rays into energy. Something that, was, that could be negative, something that produces negative, they found other ways to use it for positive. While wind can be negative when it's blowing too hard, at the same time, you can catch that wind and use that wind to turn a wind wheel. Y'all know what I'm saying. And that thing will create energy to light up a whole city, to light up a whole neighborhood. The same water that can drown hundreds of thousands of people, they found a way to take the forces of water running down, amen, and capture the energy or the push of that water to light up a city. You understand what I'm trying to say? Something that should, that could be looked at as negative, they found a way to tap into it and make it use for positive. And you got to find a way to step back from your pain sometimes and say, I'm not going to let this thing turn me negative. I'm going to find a way to use it for my... You have to find a way to use your pain as motivation. Y'all know what I mean. Sometimes you don't quit, not because you don't feel like quitting. Sometimes you don't quit because you know you got other people that want you to quit. And the fact that they want you to quit becomes a motivation to say, you know what? I feel like going to heaven, but I think I'm going to stay here a little bit longer just because you want me to go. <laughs> Their hate and their negativity become a motivating force to make you push. And while any other time you might would have given up, you might would have thrown in the towel. Something in you says, oh, I ain't going out like this. I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I'm going to fight back and find a way to get the best of it. Can you touch somebody and say, get the best of it. Get the best of it. Science has found a way to get the best of water to get the best of sun rays, to get the best of wind. They found a way scientifically, amen, to take that which could be destructive and to use it for something positive. Touch yourself and say, yes, I can. Amen. You have to use your pain as a tool to make you look for a solution. I'm hurting so bad I can't sit and stay like this. You ever hurt so bad that you had to walk around? Come on, somebody. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, having that kind of pain. Not, none of y'all ain't hurt like that. Not y'all Bible toting, tongue talking, tithing people. No, not the way y'all singing praise up in here. I know y'all ain't been through not, not the way y'all worship up a bit. You ever been through something, amen? You, could, you, you had to walk and then, amen, it was just, you couldn't even take it sitting down. While you were sitting down, you thought your head was going to explode. You just had to get up and walk. Oh, my God. You ever had a toothache that was so bad you were humming while it was hurting? Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Y'all ain't never had no toothache. Y'all don't know what it is to have no tooth. 
Amen. The pain makes you do something. Come on, somebody. You got to find a way to turn your pain into motivation. You got to find a way to look at your pain and say, all right, I'm going to draw energy from this. And I'm going to make this work out for my good. It should be deterring me, discouraging me, but it's making me look for a solution. It's making me stretch. It's making me dig deeper. It's making me look harder. It's making me pray longer. It's making me give more. Touch somebody and say, it's around the corner. It's around. I want to say to you tonight, don't let pain shut you down. Let pain drive you rather than letting it shut you down. This woman was in pain for 12 years, and I know a lot of people that's given up after one week. I know people that have given up after two months. I'm not new to this, you know. This woman kept up her mental fortitude to fight and push for 12 years. And she was able to overcome. She didn't let, she didn't let her pain shut her down. She let it drive her. She used her pain to make her look for an answer or a resolution. So many people quit because of pain. They only quit. They quit because they say this too much. I can't handle it. I can't take anymore when they really don't know how close they are to the breakthrough and the closer you are to your breakthrough the harder it gets amen the closer you are to your next miracle the harder it gets you know, do you understand what I'm trying to say amen so many people say this is too much for me I can't hear I watch this show and I like it it's the show called celebrity rehab and on the first night and on the second night and the third night, the first three nights are the hardest nights because they have no access to their chemicals and their bodies have become used to the chemicals. And usually on the first, second or third night, by that next day, somebody tries to leave. Somebody tries to quit. And it just happened on this week's episode. This lady, Amy Fisher, she went outside. She took her phone and she said, I'm leaving. Amen. She couldn't, she was, she couldn't handle the pain that was going through her body, the withdrawal that was happening. And, and in her mind, she started to say, I can't take this. I can't take this. But really, if she just hung in there, which she did, she was close to being on the other side of having those chemicals out of her body. But just before she could get free from the chemicals in her body, those chemicals attacked every part of her body to try to let her go back to it but you shouldn't go back just because the devil's sending pain to your life you're gonna look at that devil and say I'm not gonna stop till I get free from this pain you gotta use it as motivation you gotta use it amen touch somebody say use it as motivation use it Amen. Glory to God. The fact that he left you and left you and the kids, don't you get bitter? Use it as motivation to get back in college. Use it as motivation, amen, to, to, to come up with a dream or concept and open up, amen. I don't know a baking business. I don't know an accounting business. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Don't sit there and fuss about what he did. Look at what he did and say, I'm going to prove to him he left the wrong one. Y'all didn't say nothing. See, I ain't say shoot him or cut him. <laughs> glory to God glory to God don't make them don't be sitting there cussing at the boss because they said we have to let you go amen be determined to open up your own business to have, raise up a better business than what they have you understand turn your pain into motivation touch your neighbor and say turn your pain into motivation you have to turn your pain into motivation. You can't let it steal your fire. You have to make it turn into fire. Somebody say, she didn't quit. She didn't quit. People say things like it hurts too much. They say, I can't take any more of it. But you've got to learn how to press beyond the pain. Somebody say, press beyond the pain. Listen to this thought. Imagine if Jesus would have quit on the cross. Imagine he's up there bleeding and he's hanging on by nails. And imagine if he would have said, oh, I can't take no more. Angels come and get me off this cross. If he would have quit, not only would we not have been saved, but in addition to that, he would not have been given a name that is above every name.
that the mention of his name every knee should bow and every tongue shall but because he pressed through the pain he's been given a name thereby every man must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord why did God exalt him because he didn't quit when he was in pain he didn't quit while he was going through he didn't quit while people turned on him he didn't quit while people made fun of him he didn't quit while people spit on him he didn't quit he turned his pain into fuel and he said one day you're gonna wish that you didn't do what you did to tell somebody touch him and say turn your pain into motivation turn if you're gonna be mad be the kind of mad that makes you do something good if you're not gonna be the kind of mad about your pain to do something good with it then you need to get healed of that pain so you don't do nothing wrong with the pain because you got two choices let your pain make your life bitter or worse or let your pain become a motivating force to make your life better and I'm telling you I don't care how much Bible you quote you still sometimes are gonna have some pain many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver us out of them but we're gonna go through something so you're gonna have pain sometime so you might as well deal with your attitude before you go through the pain and tell yourself sometimes I'm gonna go through but I'm gonna make sure I have the right attitude while I go through I'm gonna bottle up this water I'm gonna bottle up this wind I'm gonna bottle up this sun ray and I'm gonna make it work for my energy I'm gonna make it work for my good I'm gonna take this pain and I'm gonna use it as fuel it's gonna drive me not to quit it's gonna make me read at night it's gonna make me go back to school it's gonna make me be the best this pain is driving me to be the best this pain is driving me it's my driving force it's my driving force amen the mother of the association that's founded called mad mother as mothers against drunk driving that organization was founded because a mother lost her son to a drunk driver and rather than getting bitter and sitting and becoming bitter and mad about the lost premature death of her son she turned that pain amen into an organization that's now helping millions of people amen to spread the news that if you're going to drink don't get in a car and drive glory to God you understand what I'm trying to say she took the situation and she was mad but she found a way to do something good with what she was mad about y'all I don't know what you understand what I'm saying if you if you get in pain and you get bitter and you get mad and you get angry and all that kind of stuff all you are doing is let the pain letting the pain get the best of you and letting people get the best of you what you got to do is you got to flip the script on that thing and you got to say I'm not gonna let it get the best of me I know it's meant to break me I know it's meant to hurt me I know it's meant to stop me I know it's meant to kill me but God's gonna use it to help me I can do all things I can do all things I gotta move on I gotta move on but Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 through 4 says these words listen listen wherefore it's on the screens wherefore I need a towel do my, wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses thank you let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So he acknowledges there's going to be sin. Every, sometimes there's going to be weights. Verse number two, read it real loud. Verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, read that phrase again, endured the cross read that phrase again endured the cross despising the shame and wait a minute that means it was shameful to be naked on that cross they were making fun of him and they were ridiculing him and they were talking about him y'all know don't act like you ain't never been talked about don't act like you ain't feel shame about something in your life before and when you feel shame about something you just want to hide you just want it to be over real fast you want to do everything you can do to cover it up but Jesus didn't let the shame make him take a shortcut he stood there in the shame and he said you can talk about me today but you're gonna be bowing down to me in three days I don't think 
Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse number three, read out loud, everybody. For consider him, touch your neighbor and say, that means put yourself in this situation. Tell somebody else, that's that, say, that means put yourself on the cross. Put yourself up there naked. Put yourself up there being talked about, spit on, piercing you. For considered him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be what? Wearied and faint where? This is what I want to get to tonight. The battle is right here in your mind when you got pain because your mind will tell you, I can't take it. I can't handle it. This is more than I can bear. And your mind will say, I shouldn't be going through this. Well, Jesus shouldn't have went through what he went through. He says, lest you be weary, and you give up in your mind. Touch somebody and say, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Look at me, there are two types of pain that Jesus had to endure. Look at me, I'm almost where I want to be. There are two types of pain that Jesus had to endure. The first type, I think, was easier, physical. He went through physical pain. They stripped him. They whipped him in his back. They put a crown of thorns in his head, and that was very painful. While up on the cross, they put him on the cross, they nailed these nails through his hands, his wrists, and both sides, crossed his legs, and put the long nail through there, through this, the lower part of his legs, ankle area, and that was physically painful. Amen. And so he went through physical pain. Say physical pain. But there's another kind of pain Jesus went through. He went through emotional pain. The emotional pain was when he looked out and saw some people that he knew, people that he helped, people whose bills he paid, People whose children he put through college. People, amen, who he helped get out of debt. People he helped buy a car, put gas in their car. People who, y'all understand what I'm trying to say. And he looked out and he could see that they were on the side of the people that put him on the cross. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I think that was worse than the physical pain. Amen. I think I can handle the physical pain more than the emotional pain of dealing with somebody backstabbing me when I should have been able to trust them. He's up on the cross and he's in physical pain, but he's not just in physical pain. He's in psychological, emotional pain. All of his disciples have ran but one. John the Beloved is the only one at the cross. Where is Bartholomew? Where is Nathaniel? Where is, y'all know what I'm, where is Thomas? He's going through emotional pain. Not just the people that were there that turned on him, the people that are nowhere to be found now that I'm in trouble. The people who I help that won't answer the phone, that won't return the email, that won't respond to the Facebook inbox. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now when it was his turn to need help, there was no help around. And that was greater pain than the physical pain. But the Bible says he endured it all, meaning he endured physical pain and he endured emotional pain. And you are sitting here and some of you, you've been through emotional pain. You've been through relationships where you've been abused. You've been used. You've been treated like a piece of meat, an animal. You've been talked down to. You've been disrespected. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say. You've been abused by sometimes where you work. You've been abused sometimes where you go to church. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. It happens in life. And that's emotional pain. It's not physical pain. And you got to know how to take emotional pain, psychological pain, and not let it damage you. Where you got to say to yourself, I'm going to use this for my good. I'm going to draw energy from this. I'm not going to let it mess my head up. I'm going to keep my head up. Glory to God. Come on, Duma. Come on. Glory to God. The Bible says, lest you come weary and faint in your mind. Some of you got to get a hard head. You need a real hard head. The Bible says he gives us the helmet of salvation. This helmet is made of material to make sure my head is protected. It's designed because it knows I'm going to take some hits. But it's designed to make sure the hits don't take me out.
And when you got saved, you got a helmet on your head because you were going to take some hits, but you got to know how to put your head down and say, come on with it. He can't feel the true pressure, though he feels the vibration of me hitting it. But there's cushion all on the inside, padding all on the inside. And that padding is to make sure the hit that I take doesn't take me out. When the road gets tough, the tough have to get going. We've been talking about pain and turning your pain into a motivating force, even to push you forward. Don't sit in pain, nothing to get better. There were four lepers in the Bible in 2 Kings 7. The Bible says, they said, why should we sit here and die? You need to say those same words to yourself. Why should I sit here and watch things fall apart? Why should I sit here and watch things collapse in my life? It will be better for me to get up and fight back and do something. That's God's word to you today. Amen. Yes, the pain has come, but you've got the power. Amen to overpower that pain. Glory to God. Hey, my time is up for today. But tune in same time tomorrow. Amen. As we continue on, amen in this pain camp 101. Glory to God. Hey, I want you to go to our Facebook page and Twitter page to connect with us. Find out more about our church on our website. Connect with us and watch video clips on our YouTube station. And of course, you can put us on your iPhone and your iPad with our very own iPhone app. Just type Zachary Timms. And even on Android phones, I believe it's working now. Hey, you know one thing I want to say before I go? We certainly do need your support. Amen. If we keep ministry going in your viewing area, it takes a lot to do it. Help us to keep ministry going. Help us to keep doing what we're doing. Help us to reach the loss at any cost. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Don't forget, we're praying for you, and you're going to make it. Pain. When you're under pain, you got to watch that you don't let your mind get weary. You gotta watch that you don't let your mind get because you can make a decision that when you look back over it you will say I made that decision out of a place of pressure and not out of a healthy place and that's why God gave us a helmet so that we wouldn't succumb from to the the word of God is rich the word of God is powerful the word of God is life-changing uh, we've run out of time and I'll desire to give you the entire message today but what we want to do is still get the message to you for free you want to sow into your future today's message is available to you for free all you do is call in or go to the website and simply put amen the name of the message amen and all you will pay is shipping and handling we'll take care of production we'll take care of duplication we'll do all of that because we are committed to your future today's message you can have it you can hear it over and over and faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of the lord over and over again now of course if this ministry has been a blessing to you don't just pay the shipping and handling put something extra amen contribute to the gospel going out to all parts of the world amen god bless you we love you you know what we believe in you we believe in you to give into you may you be blessed if this message has been a blessing to you, consider sowing a seed to the continuance of No Limits Around the World. With your financial support, determination, perseverance, and love, we are achieving excellence and making a difference around the world. For more information about us, visit us online at ndcc.tv.